convert students into fans, wow your peers, and even more than that, you can find a way to change the flow world, all by teaching really amazing workshops. Here's how. Hi, Drex here from Drex Factor Poise, sharing with you the love of boy spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. I have been teaching and performing flow arts now for a decade and a half, and I would love to share with you some of my favorite tips for planning and putting together workshops. But before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And special thanks to the non-business friend of the channel, Pekka Pekkonen. Thank you so much for supporting my channel, my work, and my mission. So as I'm recording this, it is in August of 2023, and I think this puts us roughly somewhere between two-thirds to three-quarters of the way through the 2023 festival season. Um, just a few days ago, I got back from teaching at Great Lakes Flow Retreat, and my mind is swimming because one of the requests that I got there was to teach a workshop and or create a video on how to create a workshop. So, your wish is my command. Education is a cornerstone of what I consider my mission in the flow arts to be. So it seems kind of up my alley to talk a little bit about how we can create the best version of that experience for others. So in this video, I'm going to cover four different aspects of how you plan and prepare for a workshop, ranging from picking out your topic to structuring the material, preparing it, and finally, what to do the day of. Only in DC do you get interrupted making a video by having a helicopter going overhead of you. Okay, so let's start off by talking about topic. I know this is a, th a thing a lot of people struggle with because, of course, how do you pick something that people are going to want to learn from you? Of course, once I sit down to do this, it starts raining. Now, me personally, I think that a great workshop answers at least one of five specific questions. Number one, what's something that I wish that I had learned earlier on in my flow journey? That is, was there a specific trick, technique, or approach to spinning that you wish somebody had introduced you to earlier? Something that could have made your life easier, or that was particularly insightful in a way that stuck with you for a while? Number two, what is something that I think everybody should know in the flow arts? Is there a major gap that a lot of people have in their learning? Is there something that you think everybody ought to have in their wheelhouse? Something that just makes their flow journey better or easier in the grand scheme of things? Number three, what's something that I'd like to see more of? Is there a particular thing that you think has a lot of potential? Is there a particular thing that we somehow lost at some point in the past in the flow world and you'd like to see come back? Hey, a workshop is a great opportunity to introduce more people to it. Number four, is there something that people are frequently asking you about? A lot of us post videos online. Is there something that people single out in your videos that they say, hey, that was really cool. Hey, guess what? That's an excellent opportunity to build a workshop around. And finally, kind of the nuclear option here is just looking and seeing what people are asking about online. You know, you could check and see if there's a lot of people asking, how do I do this or how do I do that in one of the online groups? And quite frankly, if there isn't a post already like that, you can always add one. Do a post in Poi Chat or one of the many other Flow Arts groups and ask, what is something that you would really like to learn in a workshop? Because some people learn better face to face than they do in videos, and the answers might surprise you. Okay, the radar seems to indicate that this is either going to stay light rain or it is not going to continue at all, so everybody keep your fingers crossed for me here. Okay, so next up, let's talk a little bit more about how you structure this workshop once you've got your topic picked out. I personally think that you should never ever plan to teach more than, say, three or four tricks max in a class. There's a few reasons for this. Uh, number one is that the students are just going to burn out on taking in new information, especially if the tricks are really challenging. Uh, you're probably going to get maybe two or three tricks in before people's capacity to bring in new information is just going to kind of reach its limit. Number two, try and make sure that the knowledge that you're conveying to people flows into each other. 
Um, there's a big problem that a lot of us have when we start spinning where we think of individual topics or tricks as almost being like separate boxes that exist in isolation from each other. One of those big breakthroughs that happens for people when they're learning how to spin is being able to connect the dots on those things and be able to put the boxes together and stack them like Lego blocks. Knowledge in your workshops should be the same thing. The knowledge you learn for trick A should flow into the knowledge that is necessary for trick B. Make sure that the connections between all of these things are glaringly obvious to your workshop attendees and that will create a better experience for them. Number three, be aware that people learn best when they're uh, receiving knowledge through three different channels. So make sure that you have methods built in to be able to reinforce knowledge uh, verbally, visually, and kinesthetically. Make sure that everybody is going through those steps and people will retain the knowledge a lot better. Also, plan time to get newbies up to speed. People will drop into your classes for one of three reasons. And of course, the reason we all hope for is that they're super keen on the information that you're gonna teach and they're showing up ready, willing, and able to assimilate it. And yes, some people will show up with that in mind. However, a very significant number will not. They will show up for one of two other reasons. Number one is that they're familiar with you from online and they want to meet you and get to know you better. Um, number three, quite frankly, a lot of people at the festivals are probably interested in a tool, go around to one of the vendors and pick up the tool for the first time and they're really keen on learning something right away and yours is the first workshop on the schedule after they have picked up that prop and they will walk in and probably have absolutely no idea what it's about and have absolutely no prerequisite knowledge. Always assume when your students are walking into your workshop that they have no prerequisites under their belt, that you are starting them from scratch. Yes, that makes the more advanced workshops harder. And yes, this is also why more advanced workshops tend to have very poor attendance. Make sure that you're building in time at the very beginning to catch the newbies up. Assume that you're going to have to explain every single concept that you're covering in great depth. Do not take anything for granted. You also want to build in time for rests and jokes. Uh, as you are facilitating people getting new knowledge, make sure you're building in time for them to take a little while to work on it. Uh, very few people uh, are able to do something the first time that they're shown it. Um, make sure that you're explaining and not just showing. And also um, make sure that you've got a couple jokes written in there too uh, to help break the mood and break the tension and everything. It gives people's brains just a little bit of a chance to relax as they are accumulating new information. And this is a really important thing. You want to make sure that you're not covering so much information in your workshop that it can't be summarized in five minutes. Generally speaking, you want to finish up your workshops with a little recap. You want to have your uh, the people who are taking your workshop pull out their phones and record a quick video. Um, if you can't uh, if you can't summarize it in five minutes, you're covering too much information. Cut it down. Okay, so that was a lot of information about how to prepare your material as well it should be. Um, a good workshop is something that requires a lot of planning and prep and a lot of refinement too. So let's talk real, right quickly uh, about how to refine that material before you ever get in to teach it. So I highly recommend doing a dry run of your workshop. Whether you get together a small handful of friends or perhaps like you could do a live stream uh, on your social media, uh, basically run through the material and see as you're doing it how it flows. Yes, pun intended. You want to watch out for moments where your students get either a little lost or a little stuck. Those are moments that you need to pay very careful attention to. Is there something that needs more explanation? Is there something that you should anticipate and incorporate into how you present that trick or material? Um, and this is also another opportunity to find out if you're covering too much material. Are people struggling to catch up with all of the stuff that you're doing? I know that from like the early part of my career, I was really insecure about not teaching enough stuff. And believe me, uh, the challenge that you have is not providing enough material. The challenge that you have is providing the best material you can inside the time that you're allotted. Don't stress about quantity, stress about quality. 
if people run out of there with three or four moves that they're super excited about rather than 10 moves that they barely remember, you've done a better job. Also, use this information to help work up a second draft of the material and use that to uh, inform how you're gonna actually teach it once you get to the event itself. Okay, so the final thing we have to cover then is what happens the day of the workshop. Uh, how to prepare for the actual teaching of it. Before you go into your workshops, be well rested, be sober, uh, make sure that you can be mentally present for your students. I know that flow festivals and flow events are really exciting and you want to go do all the things. You've been hired to do a job here. Make sure that you are showing up and you are giving your students the best that you have to offer. If for no other reason, then um, you can think of your workshops as also being essentially an opportunity to pick up new fans and new customers. Do not squander that opportunity. Number two, be on time. Program your workshop times and location into your phone. Make sure that you are setting an alarm for yourself that is 15 minutes before you're supposed to go teach class. If you are wandering around and you need to run back to your tent, then set the alarm for 30 minutes instead. Uh, make sure that you are there before anybody else. Respect people's time, please. Here's another big one. It feels great getting to teach a workshop. I know it does. The moment you step into that workshop, the focus is on the students. It's not on you. Figure out what your students need from you and be there to deliver it for them. This can take the form of um, taking extra time with students that are really struggling. We all get drawn into the whole thing of, you know, the people that get it are kind of feeding our egos and the people that aren't make us a little bit insecure about how good a teacher we are. Put that ego aside. Spend the time with the people that are struggling. They need it more than anyone else. Also, make sure that you're doing that recap at the end. There are so many studies showing that when you summarize knowledge again at the end of a lesson, it is way more likely to stick with people, have them take out their phones and record. Another big one, and this is gonna be a really unpopular suggestion, but make sure that you're building in at least 30 minutes to an hour afterwards to recover. What does recovery look like? Go find someplace quiet, chill out for a while read a book, play a game, give yourself time to recover afterwards. Um, if you don't, you're gonna have to find that recovery time some, uh, some other time. And it might be during that weekend, it might be after that weekend, but you will have to pay the piper at some point. So um, personally, I think it's better to do that right afterwards and uh, nourish your needs right then. Not the least of which, because you might be teaching another workshop later on in the day. And finally, Easily the most important tip I will give you in this video. Bring a notebook with you to the workshop. Here's why. At the end of the workshop, tell everybody that you want their feedback. Have them write down their email addresses in your notebook. Um, I have a Google form that I send around to people who've taken my workshops that uh, I specifically use to tailor the material in my workshops. My most popular workshops uh, probably took me around like five to six years of taking in feedback and trying new things and trying different things before they arrived in their current forms. And the thing is, is like looking at the feedback that I've gotten over the years, I can absolutely point to the material having ebbs and flows in terms of its effectiveness. And now uh, the workshops that I teach, I consistently get top marks on because I tried out things that didn't work and I heard from my students the things that did and that showed me what needed to be cut and what needed to be added. And add a bonus, the email addresses that you collect are also the beginnings of an email list for you. It's good for building your brand, it's good for building your business, and it is absolutely necessary for improving your workshops. Um, I will include a link to uh, the workshop feedback template that I use as a link down in the description of this video for those of you who are interested in adding this to uh, your own workshop. All right, cool. So with all that said, let me get out of the rain now, shall I? Cool, so I hope these tips help those of you out there that are interested in uh, teaching workshops. Um, 
one of the tips that I didn't mention here that I probably should have is that a great way to prepare for teaching workshops is to go take other people's workshops. Pay attention to what they do that feels really effective and pay attention to aspects of the class where uh, notice the places where you lose interest or start getting bored or your mind starts wandering and uh, take a moment to figure out like why did that happen in that moment and what could a instructor do to recenter the class in those moments. What was the best workshop you ever took? What made it such a good workshop? Leave me a comment and let me know. Uh, and let me know if any of these tips in particular jumped out to you and really made you think about teaching differently. Uh, in the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Uh, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to help other people find this video and to help my channel grow. This video would not be possible were it not for the kind support of all of these lovely people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon. They and the people listed down in the description help to make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. Thank you one and all for your very generous support. And if you out there watching are interested in supporting my work but are not currently supporters, you can... Become a supporter by heading on over to patreon.com slash directsfactorpoi and signing up. There you can get access to a whole host of awesome rewards, but even better than that, you'll be supporting me in my mission to bring poi spinning and flow arts to the whole wide world. So go check that out, please and thank you. And if you would like to check out more videos I've done that are resources on flow festivals and other aspects of flow culture, I will go ahead and leave a link to a playlist of those videos down in the description as well as up here on screen if you're watching on YouTube. Also, the YouTube algorithm thinks that you might like this top video here because it is popular amongst viewers of my channel, so maybe give that a look as well. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to have a good day, and I will see you real soon with a new video. Peace.